What's going on, church fam? It's Church Life bringing y'all another video. I pray y'all are having a blessed day. So you click this video because you feel distant from God and you want to know how to close the gap in order to get closer. Because you do everything you're supposed to. You go to church, you read the word of God, you pray, but yet you still feel far away from God. How do I get closer? Well, today we're going to be going over five steps on how to get closer to God. Let's get into it. Number one, keep showing up. See the word saying Jeremiah 29 verse 13, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. The heavenly father loves when we seek after him with all diligence. But sometimes we are drawn away from him because we allow ourselves to be distracted with the pleasures of this world. Or we focus too much on our circumstances, meaning we make the situation bigger than God. And sometimes we make the mistake of saying we too busy to spend any time with the Heavenly Father. But there is always time to spend with God because we make room for the stuff we want to make room for. So that could be a few reasons why you feel distant from God. So we got to learn how to prioritize our relationship over the stuff of this world. Meaning, don't put nothing before God. Always keep him at the forefront. Always keep him first. And always make room to spend with the Heavenly Father. So to reverse this feeling of just thinking you're far away from God, you must identify the problems in order to change your routine. So you can begin to draw closer to God. In other words, we must disconnect from the world in order to reconnect with God and keep showing up to make this a habit. See, sometimes we spend too much of our day on these devices. And I get it. A lot of us in today's time might work from home. You might be online more than the average person. But you got to give yourself a grace period because we can't spend more time on these devices than we do with God. We got to reverse that role because sometimes you could just get trapped scrolling, watching these shorts and all this kind of stuff. And then you might only spend time with the Heavenly Father a good 10 minutes, 20 at best. So if you learn how to log off mentally and log into the scripture of God and just start focusing and prioritizing your time, if you keep showing up, eventually you're going to feel the presence of God increase in your life more and more over time. Because this is something that won't happen overnight. But if you continue to show up by reading the word of God, because that's your daily bread, that's nourishment for the soul, and pray without ceasing, but be specific, be intentional with your prayer. For example, dear Heavenly Father, I desire to draw closer to you. May your will be done in my life, dear Heavenly Father. May everything I do be pleasing in your sight, dear Heavenly Father. These are all necessary steps to continue to move forward. And eventually, over time, you'll start closing that gap and getting closer to the Heavenly Father because now you're working on your relationship with him. So keep God first at all times in your life. Allow Christ to be the foundation of your heart and you'll start feeling the presence of God increasing your life. Number two, let go to grow. See the words say in John 15 verse two, every branch in me that bear not fruit, he take away and every branch that bear fruit, he purge it that it may bring forth more fruit. Sometimes we may feel distant from God because we're still trying to collect stuff from last season that has already passed. When the Heavenly Father is ready for us to step forth into a brand new season. So we got to let go to grow because God has already cut off last season fruit in order for something new to grow in its place. If you want to develop a stronger bond with the Heavenly Father, don't worry about your life. Continue to walk by faith, not by sight. Because sometimes we worry about how stuff will turn out because things may not be going as good 
this time around as it did last season. So we try to hold on to what worked last year instead of letting go in order to develop new skills to take on new challenges. See, if we don't have real faith in the one who can help us navigate through uncharted territories, that's what keep us from moving forward in life as we follow Lord Jesus Christ. So don't worry about what you don't have or how you're going to get there. And don't even focus on how successful you was last year. Or maybe you had a bad last season. But that doesn't mean that this season will be the same. Just continue to believe and have faith in Lord Jesus because God has everything you need to make it to that designated place that he is leading you to. You just got to trust him with all your heart. So let go of everything that's not necessary for this journey in order to grow along the way. Because that's how you make room. And not only will you make room for the instructions of God in your life, but that's also how you increase the presence of God to be in your life. Because you're making space. You're letting go of the stuff that's not necessary. So let go to grow, to grow that relationship, to have a stronger connection, build a stronger bond that can't be severed. Number three, be vigilant. The words say in 1 Peter 5, verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walk about seeking whom he may devour. Pay attention to your surroundings. Because sometimes we can have people in our lives that secretly work for the enemy that's causing these distractions that we're unaware of. And these distractions may be the very thing that's keeping us away from the presence of God. Because they're keeping us living in these bad habits that's drawing us away from the Heavenly Father. And that's part of the reason why God will isolate you. So you can live in his presence because sometimes we can't live in his presence because of the environment that we're surrounded with. But when God isolates you, he's pulling you away from that environment. And that's how we learn to trust the heavenly father. That's how we learn how to have more faith, more love in our heart. That's how we learn how to forgive because sometimes it's hard to forgive when you're still in the presence of the person you must forgive. Because they might still be doing stuff that's, for one, outside of the will of God. They might still be treating you a certain way. And it's just making you angry over and over again. But when God remove you out of that equation and isolate you, when you're in the wilderness, when you have nothing else to, to do but trust God, you can also come to a place of forgiveness because you start to realize it ain't worth it. It ain't worth letting go of my peace because of this person. See, in the wilderness, sometimes that's how you can take back your peace as well. But we must always be vigilant, have a watchful eye, pay attention to the details of how people conduct themselves. If they're doing something that's outside of the will of God, the best plan of action is to remove yourself out of that situation. Because when you do that, if you ever felt distant, from the Heavenly Father, when you remove yourself out of an ungodly situation, that will begin the process of you reconnecting with the Heavenly Father. Because sometimes what causes that separation between you and the Heavenly Father is literally the environment. If people are behaving in a certain manner that's not good, that can affect the way you think, talk, act around people, but most importantly, your relationship with God. That's why the words say in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33, and I'm reading in the NIV version. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. And in the King James Version, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. So we must be vigilant and report back to the Heavenly Father at all times because he can see what we can. 
He can see what we can't. So we got to meditate on that word in order to be more vigilant because sometimes the wrong people that be in our lives can corrupt good manners and that can also lead us further and further away from the heavenly father. So always be vigilant because the devil can't wait to enter into the hearts of people that is, that's around you sometimes. Some people still live in a lifestyle that causes them to be used by the enemy and they might not even know it. So it's up to us to separate ourselves, but sometimes the heavenly father will separate you out of that situation in order for you to develop more godly principles, more godly habits. Number four, resist the devil. James four, verse seven, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. The enemy is always trying to come in between us and our relationship with the heavenly father by putting tremendous amounts of temptation in front of us because his primary goal is to keep us in darkness. And what happens is sometimes life get hard. So he will give you a way of escape or in other words, an easy way out. And I did a word title, Temptation Disguised as a way out, right? And basically what I was talking about is when life start to get hard, right? Because we might be going through trials and tribulation. Sometimes we want to get off the path that the heavenly father has placed us on because it starts to become too difficult to travel, you know, but that's just simple bumps in the road. You get what I'm saying? We can navigate around those. All we got to do is continue to Walk forward, though, on the path that the Heavenly Father chose for us. But sometimes the enemy will interfere with that to give you a detour. Instead of going through what you must go through, because that's what the Heavenly Father is going to use to strengthen you. We might take this detour because it looks more pleasant. It looks more pleasing to the eye. And ultimately, that's leading us more and more out of the presence of God. Because now we're walking on the path of destruction. But if we continue on the path that the Heavenly Father has us on, we begin to enter into the light of Lord Jesus. Therefore, increasing the presence of God in our lives. And that's how we be filled with the Holy Ghost as well. So what happens is the darkness can't comprehend the light. So that's why the devil will flee from you because you're entering into more light instead of darkness. But if you continue to walk in darkness, guess what's gonna happen? The devil is just gonna try to entice you with the stuff of this world and pull you away from God and you're gonna start trying to fill that void in your heart with everything that exists in this world. When Christ is the only one that can fill that void. Because when you remain in a bad place for too long, eventually you're going to start feeling lonely anyway. And if you're around other people that's living in the world, they feel lonely. So it just feel like you're always alone, even though you're around people. But when you congregate with like-minded people that desire to want to be more Christ-like every day, that's striving to be the best version of themselves because they want to please God. You're going to feel like you got brothers and sisters that you can talk to. And overall, it's just going to make you feel better about just living in this life, this world. So we must resist the devil by submitting ourselves to the most high God. Because one of the major weapons that the enemy will use against us to separate us from God and make us feel distant from God is lust. So to develop a spiritual strength against that, because we must walk away from lust. The moment we see it, don't even entertain it because it seems like the flesh sometimes will overpower the spirit, causing us to fall into that temptation. So to gain a resistance toward it, allow the power of God to flow through you by believing in Lord Jesus wholeheartedly with your entire heart. Because check this out, and I'm going to read this to you real quick. In James 1, verse 13 through 14, 
Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. So God don't tempt people. That's one thing we got to notice right there. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So if you have lustful desires in your heart, the devil will use that to entice you and draw you away from the heavenly father. So we got to delight ourselves in God, in the Lord, to resist those temptations because he promised to give the crown of life to those who believe and love him. Those who endure what they must go through because this path that's now becoming difficult may be the path that the Heavenly Father chose for you. And one thing about the Heavenly Father, sometimes it ain't going to be easy. So we may feel like the Heavenly Father is far away from us, but really he is actually close to us. We just feel that way because the path is becoming difficult. But if you endure it, that's what's going to build your strength. That's what's going to build that bond with the Heavenly Father. That's what's going to help correct your relationship with God, your positioning because of Lord Jesus. And that's what's going to lead also to your breakthrough. One thing about the enemy is if God is making your life hard because he wants you to turn back to him, because sometimes God will make your life hard because he wants you to repent. He wants you to turn back to him. Turn away from those wicked ways so that you can turn back to the Heavenly Father. But when God is doing it, the enemy will try to give you an easy way out. So we got to be able to recognize the two. Because one way is going to lead you away from the Heavenly Father, but the right way will lead you toward the Heavenly Father. Ultimately, obtaining a better life in the process. So resist the devil and he shall flee from you as you continue to follow Lord Jesus into his marvelous light. Don't let the devil create that distance between you and the heavenly father. Resist the devil and he shall flee from you. And that's what's going to develop a stronger relationship between you and the heavenly father. That brings me to number five, because this is what's going to make all of this make sense. So number five, prayer and fasting. And Mark 9, verse 29, and he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. So prayer and fasting with the word of God is something that not only build your relationship with the heavenly father, but it will also help you develop spiritually so that you may resist the temptation that will cause you to drift away from God himself. See, prayer and fasting is something that will help us overall in the long run. And sometimes the reason why people feel disconnected from God is because they're not fasting. And when you fast, the proper way to do it is literally spend time with God as you fast. Because when we deny the flesh, right, as we fast and stuff like that, it's healing your body. And sometimes, this might sound wild, but sometimes we're eating too much sugar. We're eating too much sugary food. And it's causing our minds to malfunction because it's a lot of processed stuff in this food that we eat on a day-to-day -day basis. So we got to deny ourselves, pick up our cross daily and follow Lord Jesus. And we must pray without ceasing as we fast. So God might be close to you, but you feel like you're distant because of the food that you consume or because of the stuff that you consume on a day-to-day -day basis when you're watching these devices. God might not even be that far from you. So if you pray and fast, that's something that's going to help you heal on the inside. 
And it's going to correct your way of thinking when you fast with the word of God. And be very intentional with your prayer. If you feel distant from God, pray about it. If you don't know what to do in life, pray about it. Dear Heavenly Father, what do you desire for me to do? What is my calling over my life, dear Heavenly Father? Show me the way so that I may not be lost again. For it is written in the word. The shepherd will leave the 99 just to find that one. You might be that one. Pray about these things. Be very intentional with your prayer. That's why the word say pray about everything. Pray about the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the jobs you take on. Pray about the relationships that you have with other people. God might be tugging at your heart to let some people go. So you can overcome certain habits that you might still have. For example, I know with me, I didn't start changing until God took me out of the land of familiar, the environment I grew up around. And the reason why that change began to happen because I didn't have certain people in my life that was causing distractions. So you got to think about it. If you're not around like-minded people, right? people that desire to want a relationship with God and you're around people that continues to live in the world, the only thing they're going to present to you is worldly stuff. The stuff that kept you disconnected from God. So prayer and fasting with the word of God is one of the major keys to closing the gap between that distance that you have to get closer to God. I pray this word bless you in Jesus name. Amen. I love y'all.